Hello everyone and welcome to Founders Fail, Lessons Learned. My name is Jose Castillo and today we are privileged to have with us Rodolphe Pierre-Louis, the founder of Action VFX. Uh, Rodolphe, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you. Um, I want to start out with a quote. Uh, this is from Napoleon Hill. He said, most great people have achieved their greatest success one step beyond their greatest failure. Do you agree or disagree with that? I would say I mostly agree with that because it's like, I feel failure, I mean, it's part of the game, right? Like you cannot just go and you win, 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 win all the time. So I do feel like every failure you learn something new and usually those, the combination of all those things that you learn is what contributes to the success that you do end up having. So yeah, I would agree with that. So what does failure mean to you? When you think of that word, when you, um, uh, if you were to write out a definition mm -hmm. for it for yourself, what would you define failure as? Man, it's like, to me, I feel like failure is, it's just what happens when your plan is not right yet. <laughs> and it's just an opportunity to essentially make a better plan next time because, you know, you try an idea and then it doesn't work, but it's not that you necessarily lose anything. It's more, okay, I tried this. What can I benefit from this? You know, what lesson can I learn from this experience? And then, and a lot of the times, even if the stuff that you do, you don't succeed at them, you still learn certain skills that, you know, you can use throughout your life. You know, even if you went to a career and that didn't work out, like those same skills transfer to many other things. So, so yeah, it's like failure. You don't really lose anything. Failure is just an opportunity to learn. But instead of, you know, learning from a book where it's theoretical, <laughs> like an opportunity to actually learn from real life and implement real life changes. So, so let's talk real life. Let's mm -hmm. just get to it. What is one of your greatest failures, either in life or in business? I would say in business, definitely like the biggest failure for me was when I was starting Action VFX. I mean, the road to starting Action VFX was definitely very up and down. Um, I remember at one point I had wanted to, you know, hire a power technician to go, you know, do some explosions and stuff to do the visual effects. And then after I sent in my down payment, they ended up running. And which was, I didn't even believe that was possible. It's like, <laughs> man, this is such a tight knit industry. Like you'd think, but no, like that happened. So that was kind of a failure. And then finally in summer 2015, that's when, you know, I found a power technician. He was in Chicago at the time. And like they've done work for like Transformers 3 and Chicago Fire and all of those things. And I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is the opportunity. I found a guy that's not gonna run. So, you know, <laughs> let's go ahead and make this shoot happen so we can launch this thing. And I remember up to that point, it was, cause I had been seven plus since I was 17, not really doing anything big, just like freelancing and stuff. But I remember up to that point, I had saved up about 10 grand which was like the culmination of all my business uh, success, if you could call it that so far. And it felt like a great idea, you know, like spend the money, get the shots, and then obviously gonna have a product that, you know, we can sell later on. And the shoot ended up going terribly. It's one of those things where we felt like we planned really well. And then once we got there, it was like, oh no, and there was like a hundred questions that I didn't answer previous to this shoot. So yeah, the shoot ended up going pretty bad. We didn't have any products that I would feel comfortable selling. It just wasn't going to cut it. And it was like, well, the money is gone. There's no products. What's next? <laughs> so I feel like that was like the lowest down mm. were you know, didn't really feel like, where do we even go from there? Because what led me to make that investment was up to that point, I was tired of losing, right? That's because I would release some effects and no one would care. I mean, it would sell, but it was like, I feel like I was in the cycle of doing things that were meaningless to 
the industry at large. And I felt like this shoot was going to be the shoot that gets us to doing something that's actually meaningful. And, and yeah, when that didn't work, it was essentially no money and just a hard drive full of mediocre footage. It's like, well, let's figure it out. But then we did figure it out with the Kickstarter campaign. So we, since I had no money, it was like, well, it's going to have to come from somewhere. And then because of the footage that we got, it was great to be able to show people, okay, there's a proof of concept. Like we've already began this project. And if you want to see the products that we were going to produce, then help us make it happen. And then the Kickstarter ended up being a huge success because we're trying to raise twenty thousand dollars ended up raising fifty nine thousand dollars so it was literally my biggest failure followed like my biggest success up to that point to help make it happen that's awesome i love hearing stories like that and and you see it time and time again with with founders with people that are launching things um what's the difference between failure and fear of failure I would say it's like failure is real right it's the thing that happens when you know the idea doesn't work but fear of failure is just the, what keeps you from even trying, yeah. you know? It's, you have an idea, but you feel, hey, this horrible thing is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but hey, it's going to happen. I can feel it, so I'm not even gonna put myself in the situation to do that. So that's the difference for me. So how do you, either you personally, mm -hmm. or for folks that are watching, how do you tell somebody else and show them that a fear is not real. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Personally, I try to fight it with logic a lot. <laughs> it's um, a smart way, yeah. It's like I'm a big fan of like self-awareness. So the thing I always try to like put everything in the right categories, whether it's with my personality or with, situa or with situations that I'm in. And in failure, it's usually what do I have to really lose? And through that, I usually find what's actually really important to me. One thing I used to always say, it's like, hey, I'm still healthy and my family still loves me. So, and, that's, and that usually does it for me because it's like, well, if I do this thing and at the end of it, I'm still going to be healthy and my family is still going to love me, then is it really that bad? Yeah. And also another thing that helps me is I'm big on emergency funds and I always make sure I have some stuff stashed up somewhere. I think I took it from my mom. She's super frugal and that helps too because if you're fearing financial failure, but you know, okay, if this thing completely fails, I at least have enough to find a job maybe then it doesn't seem that scary anymore. So That's great advice. So, you know, have that rainy day fun tucked away, but also I love fighting fear with logic. Write it down, write down what your uh, fears are and, and what the positives and negatives of a decision could be. And I think when you do that, you'll start to make it mm -hmm. easy for you to make those decisions and, and overcome failure. So thank you so much, Rodolfo. I really appreciate your time today. And we would love to hear your stories of failure as well. Share those on social media, hashtag founders fail, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.